So winter fishing has arrived in Texas Salt Strong Nation. We have had several cold fronts that have blown through the last couple of weeks that have dropped the water temperatures. We've got fish behaving way differently. You're having to change up tackle. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now, but my favorite part of winter fishing in Texas is the statistical probability of catching larger trout. This is the time of year that in Texas we can predict their movements with pretty much pure precision, knowing where they're going to be sitting, knowing where they're going to go to get their meals, and there is one very classic way to target big trout in Texas in wintertime, and that is fishing a corky. And this lure has been a staple of many a trout fisherman's box for many years. Back in the 70s, they caught a bunch of state record fish all the way up to today, where they're consistently still catching big trout. And I've had a lot of the other coaches, as well as insiders, think that I'm crazy for throwing this thing. They've never heard of it before. People outside of Texas just don't believe that this thing can consistently catch big fish. So I felt that I needed to show them exactly how it's done. I had a window to get out last week and I wanted to go and throw some big presentations. I wanted to start with top water, but mainly wanted to get out and show them what this corky could do for some big trout in the winter. All right, I've had it. I'm switching over to a corky. I cannot stand having fish that hit and do not stay on the hook. Now I'm thinking with the way this water looks, moderate clarity, some green, green or white would work. I'm feeling the green. Alrighty, so I got the corky on with the loop knot. As you guys can see, that's gonna let that lure walk nice and good as I pull it through the column. One thing I did note as I was taking that top water off, probably why I didn't get the amount of connections that I wanted and I was just getting kind of missed strikes, is there's no ripples on the surface from scared mullet. What I'm seeing is a lot of mullet that are breaching the surface that look like they're scared like that right there right there and that right there. Those are fish that are getting chased up. They're not sitting on the surface and then being attacked. They're coming up to the surface because they're being chased. So my guess is I'm gonna need to work this a little bit lower and probably see if I can pull some of those fish up, probably work this mid column because those big trout are probably laying on the bottom or just, I don't know what size trout these are, but they're probably laying on the bottom, coming up and attacking that bait and forcing it to the surface to try and pin it there and, uh, and attack it where it can't get away from them. So. We're gonna see if this presentation works out. If it doesn't, I'm going to switch to some plastics and try to get even deeper and get it right in the strike zone on them. But uh, I feel like this is gonna be the most subtle presentation that I can give to those really conspicuous big trout. So let's see what we can pull off here with the corky. There we go, there we go. A lot slower retrieve. All right, decent fish here, feels like. Yeah, just keeping it in that mid zone, that was the ticket. Definitely, they are definitely closer to the bottom. I've got a feeling this is a little bit of a better fish than that last one. Ooh, hot dog, yeah, that's a good one. Good one right here. Yes, sir. Ooh, don't do that, 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 don't do that. Please, please stop. Ooh, I barely have her. Please stop. I barely have this fish. I gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it. Got him, look at that. Hot dog. Oh man, what's that hanging out of its mouth, fellas? A corky, that is a dog of a trout, boys. Look at that. That's exactly what I came out here to catch on the corky, was one of these big guys. And they just love that lure. Matt, Pat, Richard, Luke, Tony, everybody that said the corkies don't work. Texas boys, we're up. Let's get an official measurement on this girl. So she's at zero right there. We're at, so we got zero on the rod right there. 23, it looks like up there. 23 solid fish here on that corky. Look how, oh man, barely had this fish. We'll get her back and uh, get some more. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at how she chomped on this thing. That's one fang. Oh my gosh, and that's the other. 
look at that. So she came down on this thing. It was walking in the water. She came down and bam, just inhaled this this plug right here. I, I'm telling you guys, we're not sponsored by Corky or nothing. This is just a lure that I like using because the Texans that I create content for have told me that this is the number one trout lure to use. And I'll tell you what, I've caught my PB on it. I have caught a bunch of really nice trout on it. You guys just saw me do it. It's a very consistent producer of big fish. And we, uh, we've got a lot of our own lures. This is just me trying to show a bunch of boys that aren't from Texas that, uh, we know what it takes to, to get the big fish on. Barely can see the boat. Gosh. There we go. Good hit there. That, that's a solid trout, I think. Yeah, it's, oh man, that's a good fish. It's going. It's going crazy. I'm gonna walk it down because that's a good that's a good fish. I want it to keep its head under the water so as I walk towards it, I'm just giving it enough line to stay under but also keep tension. There she is right over there. That was a real good hit. So I'm actually walking up on a bar right now. She was on the other side of it. I'm walking towards the open bay. So every time I keep picking up one of these trout, it's in a cut or a gut or just a deeper part of this flat that borders the open bay. This is a good fish right here. I'm gonna play her easy. I don't know how good I got her. It's very, very easy to lose fish. She went bananas when she ate. Came right up to the surface, did that giant monster head shake. Wonder if she's as big as the other one or I'm just feeling a lot of weight. Let's see, yeah, gonna get a look here soon. You can see my little FG knot dancing right on the surface. Best line to line connection you'll ever find. Only one I use. Let's see, uh, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Oh my goodness. Big old thick heavy trout right here. Let her play herself out. Man, it, this is one of them days I should have known to bring a net or fish grips. Actually, I do have fish grips sitting on my, oh my gosh, this is a monster, monster fish. Big old heavy trout, I can see it now. Great colors on her. This is just ideal right here, guys. Oh, Pat, Matt, Richard, Luke, Tony, eat your heart out and get yourself a corky, baby, because look at that, look at that. Man, now I didn't talk about this on the last fish. I just peed on me, but uh, you can see the mites that are on this fish. That means it's laying on the bottom. So I was working it real slow over that ridge and it came up and just smashed it. So let's get an official measurement here. Sitting it, looks like another, another 20, 23. Uh, it might've been shorter, 24 actually. Yeah, this one's a bigger fish than the first one. No, 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 it's looking like 23 and a half, not 24. But man, look at how it bent that corky up. That's crazy. What an amazing fish. Wow, so thick. Off you go. Whew. <laughs> You guys can see there's a wire in the back. You wanna try, if the trout does that to you, you need to retweak it back to about like that. I like to put a little bit of a bend in the tail, not too much. Uh, Paul made them right when he designed them, so I don't like tweaking them too much. I used to, to get them to go a little bit deeper, but I realized what's better is to just let them sink and wobble a little bit more instead of trying to force the action down. It just looks a little bit more natural, but I definitely am trying to get a little bit deeper, so I will leave a slight bend in that tail. You definitely wanna, you know, if you're trying to adjust your depths, you tweak the nose down, tweak the tail down. If you're trying to get deeper, tweak it up um, on both ways. If you're trying to come up, I would really recommend trying to keep it as, a, as straight as possible. I do want to put a little bit more in there, but that 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 is about all you need to, to get to the fish that are on the bottom. Again, I'm just in waist deep water right here. So uh, to show you guys the retrieve I'm using for these fish, it's really just 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I just let it sit. And it's gonna wobble down to the bottom for about three seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then give it another three to five seconds as it goes towards the bottom. And you'll adjust that waiting period as you get shallower or deeper. Um, and if you want to move faster, you know, add more twitches in, less stops. I do it, I like the 10 count. It's just a to me a really good cadence that I feel comfortable with. Some guys change it up. It's all based on what the angler feels is best for them. If you're sitting here trying to make a rhythm of things, you know, give yourself a count of twitches and then give it that stop for a couple seconds. You want it to go down, especially when there's trout sitting on the bottom like this. Both of those fish had mites on them, uh, so they were definitely laying on the bottom. If there's bugs that can get on their stomach, uh, those bugs aren't just swimming around in the water. You'll see a flounder a lot of times with those same mites on them. So that tells you exactly where these trout are laying, waiting for something to come wobbling over their head or twitching by them like this corky does. Something that's gonna zip by like a paddle tail, just move them way too fast for these guys. You can maybe use a power prawn, but I do feel like these trout key in more on bait fish presentations. You could try bouncing a, a paddle tail a little bit slower, but for me, this corky is just such a great presentation if you really wanna slow things down and feel out the area that you're fishing. There we go, got another one. I don't know if this one's as, oh, lost it. Just didn't have a good hook set on it. Man, that is the tough part about fishing these daggone treble hooks. I saw it come up and throw its head. It looked like it was a decent fish, but maybe not as big as that last one. Man, I can just barely see the motor of my boat. I literally can't go any further than this. I'm gonna have to start walking circles around it. But it stinks because the specific structure that I'm trying to fish right now. I know it all looks like just an open flat, but when I when I scouted this out on smart fishing spots, there's actually a lot more over here, um, which I'll go over in the post trip analysis. But you know, I uh, <laughs> I cannot stray any further from my boat. Where to go? Oh no, I can't see my boat anymore. I literally just saw the motor. Oh gosh, I heard someone start their boat up over there. All right, well. Okay, I think I see it, it's right over there. So I'm gonna start <laughs> hooking over that way. Thankfully my watch has GPS, so I'll just set a bearing on where it is here in a second so I can find my way back to it. Didn't mean to scare you off. Still friends. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this. I don't wanna get it on my fingers this time. <laughs> Stuff stunk for like 20 minutes, there we go. There we go. A little bit of extra sauce to make that trout that's following commit. Look at that, man. That is what draws them in. There we go. There's a go. Oh no, this was a really good fish too. Gosh. Oh my goodness, crunched it. Look at that. You've got to be kidding me. That was a monster fish. Oh my goodness, just wrapped the hook the wrong way. You've got to be kidding me. How did that even literally bent it so hard? The front of the oh my goodness that was a hit man that might have been a maybe a redfish or a monstrous trout maybe a monstrous trout because that's crazy oh man the force it takes to do that my goodness and it's just patience 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 trying to find that one fish that is going to bite that stinks when you lose them though so that's two fish lost two fish caught come on corky do better that felt like a really good fish. If that was a trout, which it hit on the drop, you know, like all the other trout have, usually redfish chase things down as they're rolling by their face, but you never know. That was a that was a monstrous 
thump. Serious weight there. Got that one. All right. Got that one. I wonder if it's, it feels pretty heavy. Let's see what we got here. Gotta find that sweet spot on the drag. A little heavier. Good weight. Feels trouty. Feels trouty. Come here. What do we got? Huh, no monster, but still a really solid fish, you know. Look at here. Look at that. Good, healthy trout on the corkster right there. I think I might be in a little school of these. Uh, they're not juveniles, they're solid trout. But uh, they're, they're no monsters like the other two we got. But I am more than happy. Yeah, see, he didn't even hook it on the, the inside of his mouth. He just came and swiped at it. Another one back. Let's find some more. That is one thing about getting into a mess of trout. Is you are going to get slimy, folks. Very, very slimy. There we go, got another one. He hit it while it was getting worked. I don't know if they're getting some more gumption about him or what. But that was, uh, that was being actively worked to the surface and that guy came up and smashed it if they're schooling then yeah they're definitely gonna act like that no monster but uh yeah i think we're definitely getting into a little school of fish here not bad Ooh, careful there fella bunch of slime bunch of slime Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh goodness. All right, let's lighten up here. Threw its head pretty good. I'm gonna walk it down. I feel like I stuck it right. Oh, well, maybe it's not as big as I thought, but I still think it's a pretty solid fish. Not bad. Yeah, these, these, medium sized ones it's just a nice heavy fish Look at that right there let's see what we got that's 17 yeah just a good thick heavy trout eating good here we go smash that corky it's again a little bit of a quicker retrieve there it did hit on the pause Woo, crazy but uh yeah definitely definitely a little bit quicker i'm having to speed this up more Still long pause, but quicker, I guess, retrieve, and they're, they're jumping on it sometimes on the pause, sometimes, you guys taking off? Uh, sometimes on the pause, sometimes as it's kind of getting away from the pause, they jump on it. So it's, uh, it's kind of varying right now. So I'll just kind of keep mixing up that retrieve and figuring out which pattern they prefer. I think I just caught a bunch of grass. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I am catching grass. So here is where the corky does not excel. I'm getting up shallower. You can see I'm pretty much at my knees now. 
moving in this this fog is not going anywhere anytime soon so i might as well try and uh, still catch some fish it's starting to die off out there i'm not seeing a whole lot of bait but i am seeing a lot of bait up here and in fact i just spooked something pretty big it could have been a red could have been a big trout but it was sitting right in this little pothole right here problem now is as i pull this corky over this grass i'm in very shallow grass there's nowhere for it to sink and uh, these trebles are going to catch a lot of that uh, grass and it's not it's not going to make for a really good presentation so i'm going to put the corky up and i'm going to switch to an alabama leprechaun being that uh this this green has been really going off for these trout i'd love to get like an alabama leprechaun corky i'm gonna i'm gonna have to call mirror lure about that one somebody call mirror lure and tell him i want an alabama leprechaun corky maybe then we'd get matt to start fishing these things now here's the deal i could technically put on this guy right here you see that red on the side of its gill that means floater it's going to stick a little bit closer to the surface but being that these guys are so close to the bottom and there's so much grass around i think i'm going to skip the floater for today i'll fish it over sparse grass but this is heavy grass right here i think this darting in and out the gold flack uh, flex and flashes that's going to be the ticket looks like uh Toss Helix 5 odd. Where am I gonna find one of those? I know I got one down in there. Oh, I see it. It's at the bottom. Fish it out here. There we go. Big key with jerk shads. If you want them to work right, make sure you're centered up on that pin, which now it looks like I am. Line it up. Get that through. Make sure she's sitting flush. Perfect. That's gonna roll right through the grass in line. It's gonna dart real good. Probably get the attention of some redfish if there's some up here, which I don't doubt that there are. So we're just killing time, catching fish until this fog burns off. Now I'm gonna throw a little juice on that puppy. Never hurts to add some scent. Man, it's so funny watching all that menhaden oil and fish oil get in the water and just trail that lure look at that as i jig that thing it's just got all kinds of scent behind it if something's following that and it picks up on that scent it's just gonna jump all over it it's just like that is that is a dinner bell except for your nose now the retrieve for this is pretty simple it's just uh pop pop get that lure up get it dark and then let it settle back down pick up the slack again so all you're doing is just trying to get that lure to pop you can also work it to the side a little bit faster if that's what the fish are on and it seems like these guys might be moving a little bit quicker so i'll just uh I'll, I'll probably start with that it's just that side retrieve bam bam pick up slack bam bam pick up slack that's going to be the retrieve that i'm going to use here so if i pick something up here you guys will know i'm going to go grab my fish grippers because if i'm up in this territory probably going to be some big fish that uh, I'm gonna be dealing with if I do get one. Again, I don't know if the trout bite is still on. It's getting later in the day. Normally trout are real early feeders. Uh, I'll probably encounter some redfish, but we will see. So while I'm here at the boat, I kind of want to walk through my setup really fast because I get a lot of questions on the tackle and rods, reels, line, all the stuff that I use. Again, we're not sponsored by any of these companies. Salt Strong takes no sponsorships. Uh, so we're just recommending what we use uh, and giving a little bit of reasoning behind why we chose it. So starting off with the rod, probably the most important part of trout fishing, make sure you pick up something that's between a medium and a medium light. Uh, you want to have a good balance of hook set power. Again, the medium will give you the best hook set power. Medium light will give you the best play when you fight fish as those trout come up to the surface and shake their heads uh, that is where the medium light will give a little bit back to that fish and you'll have a lot less fish that are able to throw the hook now the reason i have the medium today is i had a feeling i was going to run into some red fish and i do like having that backbone on the medium because it helps me get fish in a lot faster um, and i do enjoy having a, a stronger hook set on these fish which is just as good as being able to play them right uh, so it's really up to the angler what they want to do if you've got a really strong hook set maybe the medium light might be for you uh, you'll find yourself losing a lot less fish uh, but if you want to have a stronger hook set would definitely recommend the medium seven six is my preferred length for the rod helps me get a good distance while not losing out on accuracy anything longer than seven six you'll be able to cast further but you're going to lose out on that accuracy and a lot of times you'll see me cast to a school of mullet or one mullet that jumps that just gave itself away that a trout was chasing it and i want to be able to put that lure in that right spot immediately 
immediately. So I do like the accuracy. That 7.6 is a, a good balance. I do have that little rod ruler on here. We have those in the shop as well. I think they're like two or three bucks. Really, really nifty. If you're out here, you catch a big trout, want to know exactly how long it is. Um, the line I'm using, 10 pound Power Pro. I like using 10 pound because I probably am not going to hook anything that's more than 10 pounds out here. And uh, if you play the fish right with your drag and everything, you really don't have to worry about it breaking. And you're going to get longer cast with a lighter diameter line. I know a lot of guys that use 20 pound test uh, braid. You're not going to gain a whole lot of, uh, of strength on fish. Uh, you'll still probably break them at the same rate that you would with a 10 pound, but you're going to be able to cast further. I do just prefer to have that lighter line so I can get longer casts and have a little bit more sensitivity. Uh, the reel I'm using is a BG MQ 3000. Again, good balance between power and lightweight. Uh, the MQ series is really nice because it's got that good strong drag. If I hook into one of those big redfish, uh, but it is also lightweight enough to make a lot of casts to trout. Uh, as you guys see, it's tons and tons and tons of casts that you're making. So you want to have a good lightweight setup so you're not fatiguing yourself. Now, the leader I'm using is the 20 pound Seeger Floor carbon i do like fluorocarbon when i'm fishing for trout there is a uh, a big controversy out there on whether fluorocarbon actually is more invisible to fish if there's a chance i'm going to take it and i'm going to use that fluorocarbon but i've caught a lot of big trout using monofilament as well so uh, i've got that jerk shad that i was talking to you guys about earlier on that four rot hoss helix hook again i'm about to go up into an area that's got a lot of grass so i want to make sure i'm giving a good weedless presentation but that's pretty much my setup right there uh, nothing too crazy good lightweight rod that i can make a lot of cast with be accurate with still be able to fight fish well and uh, that reel is good lightweight uh, so I'm not fatiguing myself it's really big key when you choose a good trout setup is you want it to be lightweight you don't want it to fatigue you really quickly because if you're making a lot of casts and your setups really heavy you're gonna find yourself tiring out uh, pretty quick and wanting to head in early when you could be out catching a lot more fish so I'm gonna jump back into fishing just wanted to walk through my setup real quick for you guys uh, and if you're an insider by the way you get 20% off all this stuff in the shop again we're not sponsored by any of these companies just wanted to give you my personal recommendations again like the corkies i begged the shop to put them in they're really a texas classic and i'm not a lot of other states i see using them um, but they're they work so well and i asked the shop to put them in there uh, so that you could save a bunch of money on a 15 dollars lure same thing with all these other products again not sponsored just wanted to give you guys some good recommendations so i'm going to jump back in and we're going to see if we can find some more fish sign right there he's still jumping around he ain't scared he's just having fun but presence of bait is very encouraging considering out deep I wasn't even seeing any mullet that were up having fun they were just gone they might have moved shallower and I wonder if the, the trout followed them because it's it's very temperate conditions so they're just gonna stick with the bait there's nothing that's forcing them from an environmental standpoint to move shallower or deeper um, temperature wise so oh man I had a fish there daggone it that might have been a flounder that was a flounder oh boy Was not prepared for that. What do we have here? Oh my goodness. Monstrous trout, it would appear. I was messing with my watch. Yep, it would appear. Oh, you're just going bananas, aren't you? I stuck you good, you're not going nowhere. No, my grips. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. I don't even got to worry about these. You can throw your head all you want. You got got by the Alabama leprechaun. See, you don't only need a corky. You can catch them with a bunch of different lures. More matters about the spot that you pick. And again, I am going to break down the area that I'm fishing. In the post-trip analysis, if you're an insider, you will have access to that if you're watching this on YouTube. Oh my goodness. Lost that fish. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, 
I will have a, a link below if you would like to see this insider report where I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about spot selection, which is a critical part. But again, lures do play a big piece of your presentation, but you could have the magic lure if you're not in the right spot, you're not going to catch fish. Got you now, Bubba. Got you now. Oh, not happy about it. Not happy about it. No monster here, but. Seeing some more activity in the shallows. I'm thinking these fish started out deeper a little early. Maybe it was cool last night. There was a lot of wind. I can't say for sure why they were deeper uh, this morning they could have been shallower and I'm just getting into these fish now and these fish are the ones that are turning on but when I started fishing top water um, over in the shallows first thing in the morning wasn't a whole lot of activity there and nobody was taking me up on it but it, it could have just been the wrong lure choice so get that guy back but we are definitely getting into some action here that's two fish in a very short span of time and a possible missed flounder on that leprechaun. So I'm walking and there's a pretty heavy gut here that uh, that just dropped down. I don't think I can cross it. So I'm gonna turn around and go grab my boat and move a little bit closer to the shoreline because the, uh, the action in the shallows seems to be pretty hot, but I think uh, I'm not gonna be able to pass this gut that leads right up to the shoreline, but I wanna get up there because I'm sure that there were some fish hunkered down in that gut this morning that moved up shallow and i want to get to those guys that are that are pressuring fish up against the shoreline probably going to be some reds up there too i'd like to at least get one red to finish out the day if i can do that we'll consider it a success or one more big trout because uh, it's starting to get a little bit later than i wanted to be out here just been waiting for this fog to burn up and i just don't think that that's going to happen unfortunately all right so already seeing some mullet up here it is uh, still super foggy, but I am determined to try and pull out one more fish. Trout, red, don't matter what. How are you doing? Oh, look at him. He just grabbed a mullet right there. How about that? Well, if that doesn't tell you there's bait in the area, I do not know what does. All right, grab the handy dandy belt. Fish grips. Rod with leprechaun. A little less stealthy than I would have liked, but I'm pretty far away from the shoreline. I should be fine. Tell you what, I'm gonna make a quick switch here from the leprechaun to the mulligan. The only reason I'm doing that is because I feel like redfish really like chasing fast moving lures and the leprechaun plays more into the ambush predator style nature of, uh, of feeding. So I think the paddle tail will do a better job of enticing some strikes from some redfish, which is most likely what's up here. It seemed like, you know, the trout were pretty heavily concentrated out there. Usually where you find one, you find most of them. So I'm gonna throw this paddle tail on and I think I'll be able to find myself a red pretty quickly. Got him, got him. Please be my red fish, please. Be my redfish. That sounds pretty redfishy. Oh, oh, yes. We did it. Just as the fog is burning up, we have done it. We got him. Oh, yes. We did it. Redfish to finish the day. 
Yes! So with that redfish released and a couple big trout under my belt, I headed home knowing that I was able to show all the guys down in Florida, the Carolinas, everywhere other than Texas, that this thing is the real deal. Now, insiders do want to remind you, we do have these in the shop. We're not sponsored by Mira Lure or Paul Brown or anybody. This is something I asked Justin to add in because these are like 15 bucks in a tackle shop. And I know personally, as someone that fills his box with Corky's in the winter time, I can probably pay for my insider membership just in what I save in Corky's alone by spring. So definitely recommend if you're after big trout, pick up a couple of these guys, whether you get them from us or not, I have a lot of tutorials on how to fish these, recommend using them because they produce big fish. If you have any other questions, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the spot analysis where I'm gonna go over a lot more about why this trip was productive so that you guys can learn a little bit more about finding the 90-10 zone. So thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next report.